Okay, so let's talk about psoriasis. Can't pronounce it properly if it's spelled with a P. Um, I've got several friends have got this, and I think I can sort of see the the telltale symptoms. But let's let's just start with what is it? Um, so psoriasis is a it's a skin condition, and it's a it's a chronic inflammatory type of skin condition that is autoimmune. So it's involving the immune system and actually causing inf inflammation at the surface of the skin. So what ordinarily happens is the surface of your skin takes about 28 days to actually um, to shed. So to go from like a sort of a skin cell at the base surface to actually shed off, it takes about 28 days in a healthy person. But what happens in psoriasis is it takes somewhere between maybe three and five days. So what that means is that actually when, so when your skin is forming on the outside, it's like a waterproofing barrier for your whole body. But if it doesn't take that full 28 days to develop, what you end up getting is lots of raw red patches and lots of scaliness that develops. So somebody with psoriasis would have on their skin um, some, it literally looks like scales um, that can be quite white and quite dense. So you often see it around elbows? Yeah, it's common. Like the most common place is on the outer surfaces of the joints, so the elbows and the fronts of the knees. And that's different to eczema that's more the internal surfaces, like the inside of the elbows or the backs of your knees. So um, that would be like the the classic case of psoriasis but I've seen a lot of cases in my clinic of psoriasis where it's it's all over the torso it's it's in the hair on the scalp it can be actually anywhere on the body and so um how how could there be a connection between psoriasis and the gut how how, how does that work so with the with with the fact that it's autoimmune and it's inflammatory we are always thinking the gut in those circumstances now because for development of any autoimmune condition, at some point there's a break in the integrity of the gut barrier. So the lining of the gut is only one cell thick and when that starts to become, it starts to lose its integrity, this is one of the underlying factors of how autoimmune disease develops in the first place. And, and that's where we start talking about leaky gut syndrome. Exactly, yes. If you want to see more about leaky gut, there is another video specifically about that. But, but let's just carry on on this on this vein at the moment. Yeah. So back to the, the barrier. Yeah. So if the barrier loses its integrity, um, what happens is it allows some toxins that are in the gut or just normal food particles that are in the gut to penetrate in through through the gut wall that's really, really thin. And the immune cells that are waiting under the surface of the skin there, not the skin, sorry, under the surface of the barrier, they are then ready to pounce on these incoming pathogens. So it causes an inflammatory response in the body. And that inflammatory response has been specifically linked to psoriasis. And so standard treatment for psoriasis is... So immunosuppressants, so drugs that like either topical or like things that you put directly on the skin or systemic, so something you'll take orally, but they're immunosuppressants. So maybe steroids, for example, that would be a, a common treatment for psoriasis. And it's just suppressing the immune response. So rather than it's like, rather than dealing with the fire, it's putting the smoke out, you know? So it's still, it's not dealing with the source of the inflammation, but it does help to shut down that inflammatory response. So what are some of the natural ways that you can set about treating psoriasis? And realistically, like what sort of results can you be expecting from that? So with somebody, so in my clinic, I tend to see the more extensive of conditions with psoriasis. So that can take more time, you know, definitely thinking of months rather than weeks. Um, there's a there's an implication with gluten foods and psoriasis and they've actually done some tests on this that people that have psoriasis and they have their blood tested to see if they've got antibodies against gluten um, which means that they're actually showing a reactivity of some degree to gluten it's really really common in people with psoriasis so there's more prevalence of gluten sensitivity in people that have got psoriasis so that is like something that you can modify in the diet straight away and see if it makes an impact and actually sometimes on if you take it away for six weeks and things do start to improve that's something that you continue until it was completely better then you could reintroduce it again and you may not be as sensitive but if there is a leaky gut present which is it's often associated with psoriasis then the um, the gliadin which is the one of the proteins in gluten that can actually make that worse 
So there's a couple of reasons there why gluten might not be advisable for somebody that's got psoriasis. So if somebody's watching this and they do have some, you know, some re- relatively sort of severe psoriasis, it's not as simple as just cutting gluten out because, because for no. some people they have to go and repair the gut. No, for all people, I would say. So, you know, psoriasis is directly linked to the gut, directly, because, uh, you know, the microbes in the gut, the microflora, if that is out of balance, then that contributes not only to leaky gut, but it contributes to the generation of inflammatory chemicals. And then if you're genetically susceptible, then those inflammatory chemicals target the skin cells that are turning over. So when you're when someone comes to see you and they've got it, give us an idea of the process that you take them through somebody that did have it that's quite severe okay um so for the person that i have in mind he was a teacher um and he had he had it all all over his body it was it was bleeding sometimes like he had to have dressings on it and things like that and the stress of his job was really exacerbating it that's the one observation i've made i don't know if it's a proven link between stress and psoriasis but certainly in all the cases i've seen stress has been a massive trigger for those people to get these episodes but um in that case we assessed um his gut we did stool samples and we looked at the bacterial population and we looked where there were deficiencies and where there was actually um, excesses. And actually, in his case, there was a fungal overgrowth. So that's something that we needed to deal with. And that's not necessarily applying to all cases of psoriasis, but because there's, it's always associated with an imbalance in what's growing in the gut. Sometimes it's an overgrowth of bacteria. Sometimes it's an overgrowth of yeast or fungus. So, you know, we have to establish what it is because you treat those things completely differently. Um, but we also had to support some skin nutrients because vitamin D deficiency was really prevalent in this guy. And actually autoimmunity relies on on vitamin D as does psoriasis as a condition. Um, vitamin D is really, really important. So um, and also if you consider somebody who I've just described with these psoriatic lesions and scaliness all over, he's not getting his skin exposed to the skin because he doesn't want to show the skin to anybody. So his natural vitamin D from the sunlight was really impaired and he'd had this condition for several years before I saw him. So he'd not seen the light of day to make his own vitamin D. So that's something that we corrected. Probably took about three to four months to get his vitamin D levels where I would want them. And what was he like at the end of that treatment? So what happened is he had some scarring that was um, that was still present, but the f- sort of fresh new lesions coming through had really, really stabilised. So um, he was his skin was very irritated and very sore and all of that. The actual inflammation of it went. Um, it probably took, in his case, I think we're probably talking about seven or eight months for him, but he'd had it a long time and it was really widespread in his system. Um, But it took a lot of adjustment with his diet because he came from a diet of things like Coke, um, lots of sugar in his diet. He was quite fatigued with it. So there is a link with fatigue and autoimmunity. It could be and probably was related to his skin condition that he got the fatigue. But his diet was also not really an energy inducing diet anyway. So we had a lot of cleanup work to do that. So a lot of things like eating things that are going to give you energy, real foods, cutting out the sugar, removing the gluten, all those sorts of things. Yeah, just cleaning up. And particularly the sugar was one thing that we really had to tackle with him because it has such an influence on dysbiosis that when you're trying to correct the balance in the gut and you then have sugar, it just works against it. So... If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more from us, just click subscribe. And if you want to start your journey to better gut health, just head to gutology.co.uk. We'll see you there.